All right, this one's kind of fun. We're going to talk about um, what you can learn from a handball goalie. Okay. Um, what you can learn from a handball goalie. So I could pull out a thousand clips, but I wanted to, I just pulled out this one clip because this made me laugh. Um, so here it is. All right, here it is. So you've heard me say this before. Okay. That, that the lacrosse goalie is the only goalie in any sport that is basically taught to try to save a ball with one hand. Okay. So now let me just give you a little history here. So if you look at an ice hockey goalie, right, they have a catching glove, they have a blocker, they have a stick. Okay. They have pads. <clears throat> if a shot goes to their left side down low, they're going to try to get it with their leg, their foot, and then their left hand. If the, if the puck is going to the right side, they're going to go with maybe their, their right hand. If it's, if it's high, they're going to go with the right hand. Like, like if they're a blocker or whatever, uh, if it's going, if it's going upstairs on their left hand, it, they're going to go with their, um, they're going to move their left hand. Okay. If it goes five hole, they're going to drop and get their knees there. Even though the stick is there, right? The stick is there. A stick is about four inches wide. I can't, I can't remember exactly how long, of, uh, how wide a goalie stick is, but it's four inches wide, right? Soccer goalie. Okay. And also, you know, the equipment on an ice hockey goalie is designed to protect it from a puck, a frozen piece of plastic or a piece of rubber uh, made in Czechoslovakia that, um, that, that hurts. And I've never heard a hockey goalie say, God, if I just get rid of my arm pads, I would make more saves. Or if I could just thin out these leg pads, I could help out on the clear. Doesn't happen. Okay. Soccer goalie, same thing. All right. Big ball, big fluffy ball shot from very far away typically all right if it's shot from in close and it contacts you it doesn't hurt that much although when you get to like the pro level it can hurt um but the idea is like if the ball goes to my left i'm diving to my left you know i'm not trying to you know what's interesting with a soccer goal is that someone's going to hear this and but they go but jonathan wait the truth is that you know sometimes to, to dive it's actually better to dive and reach with the like if I'm diving to my left, I dive with my right hand, right? Just has to do with launching and things like that. Um, field hockey goalies, okay? Field hockey goalies have morphed where their equipment has actually changed, right? So they used to wear a blocker, like an ice hockey goalie, but now that blocker has actually been flipped around. So the blocker is on the front side of the hand. It's like a big, it's like a big waffle pat. Like it's just like, you know? And then the stick, they, they hold the stick in the air with the other hand. And they really have have stopped trying to use the stick when the ball's on the ground. They use their feet to just kick it the hell out of there. Okay. And they have uh, padding on their feet to to uh, to with which to do that effectively. Because you can't really kick that ball very easily with a with a um uh, with a pair of cleats on because you're gonna break a toe. Okay. And then um just for some, uh, if you look at a bandy ball, like Google it, I, I should have pulled that up. Uh, but bandy ball, it's basically like ice hockey in a football field with field hockey nets. Uh, the goalie has like, basically it looks like a ice hockey goalie, but they've kind of dropped their stick altogether. They're like, screw it. I got too much to cover. But again, they're not trying to, none of those goalies are trying to make a save with one hand. So if you go to ice hockey goalie and tell them, oh, listen, I just want you to play with your right hand today. They'd be like, you're crazy. I'm not doing that. Um, but that's what a field lacrosse goalie does. Okay. So this particular clip I thought I'd show you. This is pretty amazing. So this is a um, this is a handball goalie. All right. And and just if you've never watched handball, you should watch this save. So the deal, the deal with handball is there's this line that dot the the not the dotted line, but this 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 line here. You have to lead. You, you have to. Um, you can't step inside that line. Uh, you can jump and leap and launch the ball prior to landing inside that line, but you can't. Um, you can't uh, um, shoot past that line. All right. So that's that's the deal. So this player here uh, has the ball and he's going to jump, and then the goalie 
what I love about watching a handball goalie is a goalie. So a handball goal, handballs are actually quite hard. They're like a mini soccer ball that feels like it's been soaked in oil. Like it's heavy and it's thick. And it's actually, if you got schmucked in the face with this thing with no helmet on, you'd probably break your nose. Okay. Um, so, but the handball goalie, like if you see him come out, like, you know, if he's just trying to take up as much space as he can, right. He's trying to be as, as accessible as possible. And when we did the video, the, the, the first video about like, which stick, which, which hand should the stick be in, um, you know, a handball goalie would never say like, oh, I'm going to take my hand and hang it outside of the, the goalpost. Just soccer goalie wouldn't say it. Ice hockey goalie wouldn't say it really. Again, because it, a, a hockey goalie might to the point where he's not going to sacrifice his stance because of it. But the handball goalie basically goes, all right, I'm going to get all my limbs in all available corners and try to be as ready as possible to to make this save when it comes the shooter. Also, I think the reason why I use a handball goalie is the shooting in handball. When the ball is actually in a hand is, I think it's as complex or potentially a little bit more complex than what we see in lacrosse. Right. I mean, sometimes a lacrosse, when the balls on a field lacrosse stick, especially for the boys, there's so much lip and, and grip and all the mesh. Now, I think we really need to rethink the, the, the pocket rules in lacrosse. Um, uh, I think, I think back in the nineties, we, it was good when, you know, it felt like a defender could actually make a check and the ball would come out on the ground. We're now we're seeing that in the girls where girls can just run through everybody. And to me, that's not really a team sport at that point. Right. So the complexity in handball to me reminds me a lot of field lacrosse because the shooters basically have that hand, that ball in their hand and they can do they can do stuff with it at the last possible minute. They can flick a wrist and change the trajectory. But watch this goalie. This ball is going to go to the goalie's left. And he's going to make the save with his foot. OK, <laughs> like right, right there. So. Uh, years ago, I was in Germany and I was in this really cool gym in Germany. This they have, you know, Europe has a, a phenomenal way of using like little tiny spaces for sport. And um, there's a handball team practicing and I watched handball goalies actually practice. And I was I was shocked to see them training saves like this. And, and the hip flexibility in these goalies is nuts. And I don't necessarily... I don't fully understand how you develop this level of reasoning that it's better to make the save with your foot than your hand, but they do, and they do it a lot, right? They do it a lot. And so this is the same as a field lacrosse goalie. You know, for some of you, you know, you, you watch field lacrosse and you go, how do they make that save? And it's really understanding the language of shooters. It's understanding the language of lacrosse. It's understanding what a shooter can do. And that's exactly what happens here is that this, this goalie understands that this, this, this angle, this release, right? This, the, the way, the way the shooter is, is, um, is the, the arm is coming through. The ball is going to go there and I'm going to get my foot there. But, it, but if you notice the goalie is actually moving there before the shot even arrives. Okay. And so that's part baiting, right? That's part understanding like, okay, you know, in this situation, the odds of this shooter going here are really high because if it wasn't any different, why wouldn't the, the shooter in this case, just like yank the ball down underneath the goalie? It's all happening in a heartbeat. And I do believe that in sport, there's just certain things that we can't really train uh, th there's these intangibles that only come with experience, right? So to like Sherry Hawkins daughter, uh, the, uh, the Sherry Hawkins asking like, well, how do we, you know, how do we train that? You know, is it more reps? Yes. It's just more reps. Um, um, <laughs> and, and like, they've got handball in Sweden, right? Like it's not super popular, but you've had, you've got bandy ball, right? Um, but, um, yeah, like I when I was in Germany and I saw these handball these goalies training, this is exactly what I saw. These guys like basically walking down, uh, walking down um, a court, and they were taking these massive, like steps to their feet. I'm like, holy smokes! Like these men have like no 
testicle. I mean, no groin muscles or something. I don't know. Um, he reminds me of David Lee Roth on stage. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> Alex. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Um, so, but the reason why I wanted to show this, um, yeah, there you go, Mike. The goalie understand tells and body language. This just comes with experience. And I, and guys, I would, you know, I would argue there's probably way more handball goalies in this world than there are our field lacrosse goalies. Handball is very popular in Europe. Um, and, and what you're seeing here is this experience and, and, and this understanding, but this is where guys, I tell you, you know, I want, I want to encourage everybody to get your goalie in the cage and put the stick down have them, you know, get the tennis balls out, have them get in the cage, in front of the cage naturally. And what they'll do is they're going to start to stand like this, right? And so the reason why I want you to do that is because when they get their stick back in their hands, they're going to be there with a different level of understanding. Okay. Now, Mike, as an adult, I'll just, just, I'll just full disclaimer here. I don't recommend using lacrosse balls, but for the adults out there listening and for those of you guys that play like Mike, um, Mike, I did this with, um, I did this with Holden Catoni when he was still at Hopkins. Um, I had him shoot on me and I just had my gloves. Um, now I have a, like an older set of warrior gloves that probably the leather in the palm is a little thicker, but not, not much. But if you want to put on like a, a, a baseball, like batting glove underneath inside your glove, it's just an extra layer. But I just played like that. And I had him shoot on me and I, I left the stick. And it was amazing because I learned, you know, it's a theory I had had for years. And when I finally implemented it, it was really cool. And, and so I'm making saves off my fingers. I did crack a bone in my hand, full disclosure, uh, because I just caught like it, I caught it like perfect. Um, and um, and I had a I had a just a minor minor like um, what do you call those hairline fracture in my hand. So, but that was like full on lacrosse balls with a division one, like all second team, all American, that sort of thing. So that's, that's pretty extreme. But the point is guys, is that, is that I believe that the lacrosse goalie of the future is going to fully understand the, just more of the, I guess I want to call it like trajectory, like reach understanding of, of what it means to be able to use your body in front of the ball. Because I believe 100% that the lacrosse goalie of the future that, to change their save percentage, the save percentage that we see now, like when I watched that UVM Duke game, it, I, it made me cringe. Um, it really makes me cringe because I'm just like, this does not make sense. This is going backwards. And I can guarantee you that these guys have all spent, you know, thousands of dollars going to camps or clinics or whatever. And I'm like, well, what the hell's being taught? Right? Like what, like what, what, what's being taught? Because it just doesn't, it just doesn't make sense to me because when you start to look at other goalies and how they play, then um, then you start to see, you start to go like, oh, wait a second. I get it. So because I want your goalie to play more organically. I want your goalie to play more uh, more naturally. Like, you know, and, and I call it my TV rule. Like if you put your kid in front of your the best TV in your house and you said, all right, listen, I'm going to throw stuff at you. I'm going to try to break the TV. And uh, if not, you have to spend like all your allowance on the next TV set. Your goalie is not going to get in front of the TV set and stand like this, right? Or like this, right? Or like this. They're not. They're going to be like, I'm going to try to take up as much space as possible, right? And then they'll be like, is that a knife you've got thrown at me? Like what, you know, that's how it's going to work. Okay. So, because I want your goalie to experience that, then they're going to get their stick back in their hand and they're going to go like, this feels stupid. <laughs> and you're going to go, yeah. All right. So that's it for that one. I, and like I said, I could throw you, I could, I could show you a, a freaking a ton of handball. Uh, just go Google like, handball highlights go to youtube just search for handball highlights and you will see some amazing stuff and you will see saves like that and um and it'll be awesome and uh, what, what's interesting too about handball is they restart right from the goalie right so that's applicable to lacrosse you know kind of with the olympic rules and stuff like that but um but the idea is that you, you know you're you're going to see some pretty cool transition a couple questions here um and 
box lacrosse did help with some of that for us. I just hope that he is allowed to keep that. Yeah. Like I think, um, and I think, um, how old is your guy now? 11, 12. Can't remember how old your son, but, um, every goalie that I've ever coached, they get to a point where they run when they start. So, well, actually every athlete period. Okay. Every athlete runs. So 11. Okay. Every athlete runs into this, um, situation where they go from being taught. Right. And, and along the way. So, so instantly at 11, especially they have, um, mentors, good, bad, or ugly, but they're mentors, right? They're people they look up to literally and figuratively like they, you know, um, but there comes a point where your athlete should, they're starting to internalize what it is they're learning. Like that's the true, that's the true test of a coach in my opinion. Right. Uh, is that, is that, um, and I got asked to sponsor a goalie a couple weeks ago. I should write about that soon. I think it's the most absurd thing ever. I literally laughed at this kid's face, like totally laughed in this kid's face. Um, but the idea is that is that a coach is there to impart wisdom in your in your athlete, and they're going to go then try it right now along the way. At first, when they're first learning out, learning, it's going to be like, look, do this, and the goalies will be like, okay, thank us, I'll do that, and, and they get better, and they have some success. But then over time, your goalie is going to start to, and they should be trying other stuff, right? They should be trying other techniques, right? It's like, a, it's like a cook in a kitchen, you know, they, they might go to French culinary school, but then they're going to go try other things. Actually a fantastic read for everybody, every parent is to read the book range by David Epstein. Okay. Because in that book, there is a quote about classical musicians versus jazz musicians. And this blew me away. The whole chapter on classical musicians versus uh, jazz musicians. And it came down to this. Jazz musicians can improvise. Classical musicians can't improvise. Why? Because classical musicians are only taught to play classically. And if you if you deviate from that, then you're basically like ostracized and exiled and out you go. But because you're not going to go on stage and play some Beethoven sonata and put your spin on it, right? You'll just be like laughed at, um, especially in Sweden, I'm sure. But in um, uh, jazz musicians, they can riff and they can do stuff and they can t and they can play with anybody and they can make something out of nothing. And every musician envies that, even the classical ones. And coaching and athletes is like is a lot like that. And so what what really pains me to see in lacrosse is that we have, and this is true, we have a generation of athletes that are very internet based and Instagram based and TikTok based, and they're just seeing stuff and they're trying, they're not thinking about it. And they're not, they're not being forced to experiment either. And so for a coach to kill that, like it's just, you know, that's like a coach saying, you've got to play this way classically and i don't want any of your goalies to be classical goalies i want your goalies to all be jazz goalies right i want them to be able to think about this critically and go got it in this stance in like when the ball's over here then i can do this when the ball's on that angle then i might have to morph and do that maybe i switch hands maybe i you know save this with my left foot or my elbow like oh wait but maybe i need more equipment to do that yeah okay cool all right. So that's the deal. That's, that's the deal. All right. So, so what you'll run into Ann, is you'll run into coaches locally who have a limited, they'll have their knowledge, right? And I don't want to say limited. That's not the right word. They have their body of knowledge. Like I have my body of knowledge and, and, you know, other coaches have their body of knowledge, but the idea is your goalie, their job is to learn from those things and try to start and try things and give them a chance. And I know he's 11 and I know his room's a mess. Right. And I know he leaves his shoes like right in the doorway when you walk in and you trip on him when you come in with the groceries. And then he doesn't put the groceries away. And that little, like, just inconsiderate little shit is going to try to be a goalie. It's all going to work out, I guarantee you. Okay. But the idea is that, is that they're going to learn. 
and they're gonna they're and and they're gonna start to adapt and and you may have to fight that at times and and this happens a lot with the goalies that i coach we talk about stuff i do a goalie audit i say listen i want you to get out there and i want you to do this x y and z and then then i i hear back coach doesn't want me to play that way and that's when i tell the parents i'm like well you've got to now decide what the hell are you doing are you playing to appease a coach on your junior a rec team or your travel team or are you trying to create a division one lacrosse goalie you know and i say that to all my athletes in any sport by the way okay uh or so that's that's the deal so uh mike mike you got you got some good stuff going on tonight mike I stepped in goal at 47 years old last night against my 2028 team and let six in out of 25. I told the kids when they asked how, I told them that I've been, I've seen them play for years and experience means a lot. Reading body language and prediction is everything. It makes you look psychic. It's true. Um, and one of the things there, Mike, that's, that's really good. You know, that's, like I've done that. I haven't done it in a long time. I mean, I got two metal hips in me, so, um, the idea here is that I did play and, and one of the things that a lot of high school athletes don't understand is that in junior high school athletes is that they're still in that, they're still like putting a formula together, right? They're like, okay, I see this, 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 and I'm just going to do that, 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 and hopefully it works for me too. So there's no art yet. There's no artistry to them. And we make, um, uh, no problem. Um, um, no problem. And I see you there. Um, makes sense. Thanks, Brad. Amazing analogy. Jazz goalies. Yeah, dude, like that's what we're doing. And so, so to, for, to, to Mike's point, um, oh, wait, wait, hold on. I'm going back here first. Uh, sure. I'll get to you in a second. To Mike's point. Um, it's very easy when you have a little bit of experience to then, um, to then thwart, a bunch of 2028s who don't have that yet, right? And yeah, you look like Yoda, right? Um, or maybe Obi Wan. Uh, but the idea is that is that we want to help facilitate some creativity, right? And and if your coaches like don't do that, that's why I, I say like dedicate like five five percent of the practice, right? And and it's funny because you're you're not like just it's not willy nilly like hey you guys pick something do something weird. It's like okay, um, hey guys. Uh, bring it in for a second. Coach has something he wants to show you. And coach pulls out his phone and uh, and pulls up his Instagram or his TikTok and he goes, hey, I saw this cool play last weekend. How many else, how many, any of you guys see it? And I guarantee you they, they all saw it too. All right, we're going to practice that right now. All right, see this girl who like scoops up, up the loose ball and does like three somersaults and then uh, catches her mouthpiece out of the air you see that? And then she puts it in her mouth. It's backwards, but still in her mouth. But then she switches hands and goes between the legs, top shelf. Yeah, we're going to do that right now. And your kids are going to go like, all right, whatever, dude. Coach is a little crazy. But then you know what happens? You try it. And then, then they now have a way to develop more what David Epstein calls his book range. Um, you know, you, you got to do that. So that's, that's, that's um, yeah, that's like, just got to do it. And it's going to help your team. It's going to help your goalie too. Um, Sherry writes, interesting take. I had a coach critique my daughter because she made the same type of save in three different ways and that she needed to pick one and stay that way. Guess she's a jazz goalie. Yeah, like Sherry, without seeing those clips, like, um, and, and, and without knowing exactly what's going on, uh, my answer to that would be, there is a, there's with any ball shot from anywhere on the field. And somebody told me the other day, this is like a lot of trigonometry, right? But the idea is like for any ball shot from any place in the field, there is one most efficient way to make that save. Okay. So let's use, let's use an example off stick hip. One that drives me crazy because most goalies are taught and have been, and most coaches have been taught that we're going to basically our stick head is here and we're going to try to get our stick head there. And so what they do is they take a perfectly good piece of equipment, like their elbow, their, their, their glove, their, their bottom hand glove out of the way to try to get the stick head there. 
Whereas what I teach is like, we're going to move that bottom, that elbow and that bottom hand into that space first. Oh, but coach Edwards, I might get hit on my elbow and I don't have any padding on there. I'll be like, okay, dumbass, say that again. And they go, oh, but coach Edwards, I don't have any padding there. So what you're telling me is like, you wouldn't put your left elbow in front of the ball to make a save. I guess not. I'd be looking for another goalie. Okay. So anyway, so the to, so to share to your point, if there is uh, there's always one most efficient way to make that save in that moment. Okay. So I don't necessarily know what your coach is speaking to, um, but th that's what you always that's what you want to get your goalie to think about because that's how an ice hockey goalie treats it. That's how a field hockey goalie treats it. This handball goalie, I don't know what to talk about this handball goalie because in his in his head, it was easier for him to do a split like David Lee Roth, uh, like Alex said, um, and, uh, and and get his foot above his left hand than his left hand. So I don't know quite how that works, but the idea is that there's an efficient way to make every save. Okay. But um, so, so, so I just want people to understand, I'm not, when I talk about like jazz goalie, I'm not condoning sloppy but I'm condoning like a classical musician just learns how to play classically. It's, it's just like a hockey goalie that only ever learns how to be a hockey goalie and never looks at a handball goalie or never looks at a field hockey goalie or never looks at a field lacrosse goalie. But for a field lacrosse goalie, it's the same thing. And that's why I think we're stuck in. We're seeing like this bastardization of the position because camps and clinics and coaches and Instagram accounts are showing like, okay, this is the way you're supposed to do it. And it makes no sense. And then the goalie gets out in the field and they suck. And we're like, oh, yay, girls. It was a fabulous day today. Our goalie made 20% of the saves. Yes. Good job. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, uh, Alex writes, um, I had the same discussion about one shooter on my son's team after he saved all but one shot from him. My son realized how predictable the shooter was after four years of practicing against him. It was cool. Yes. Love it. Um, I've got a, uh, uh, got a goalie dad um, who's got a daughter and th this, I, she will remain nameless because I don't want, and because this is going to sound horrible, but she knows and this, this is going to sound horrible, guys, so I warn you. She knows that every fat girl that gets an eight-meter shot on her is going to do X, Y, and Z and shoot it over her head. And it happens every time. You know, and 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 the goalie knows what she's going to do to make that happen. And and you know what? That is – that's like professional – like what a what a real athlete does they start to go and critique and go you know what like i know in this situation this is going to happen Be why because we practiced it or i saw it happen in a game or my coach had me do something fun with like whatever right but that's the deal so i want to encourage all of you um to to you know and, and for ann when you know for your your goalie that's 11 they're still learning like they're they're still learning like the next like you know, three, three years or so, it's still going to be very formulaic. Just do this. And it'll frustrate you as a parent. Um, uh, read, um, read quiet by Susan Cain. Okay. Read the book Qu quiet by Susan Cain to help understand your kid. Um, it's, it's just fantastic. Okay. Um, so, uh, so the, it's still formulaic for a while for him. Okay. But I would encourage him to sample, like maybe playing goalie in a different sport. You know, that's also cool. Mike writes, the more I participate in these chats, the more I think that all goalies should participate in box locks and how they should pad up to make similar saves in fields. Um, yeah, you know, Mike, I think, you know, I, I agree. Like um, box lacrosse, just because of the, the closeness and the distance and the, and the need to use your body. Uh, yeah, like that, that, uh, that's, that's what I'm all about is like, I just believe that, that the lacrosse goalie, uh, the field lacrosse goalie of the future is going to use their body as a tool. I have a quote that I need to put up on Instagram, um, that says your, your, your stick is not a protective tool. It's a device to make another save. Because I think one thing that's happening is goalies that are now standing like with that vertical stick with their elbows in front of them. It's like, they're just trying to protect themselves because they don't want to get hit. But man, if you like, 
if you ever ex have experienced like a, an, an ice hockey chest protector or a, a box lacrosse chest protector, like you learn to go like you, you, you take it in the tits and you go, yeah, I did it. Right. So, um, so yeah. And that's interesting too, because what, then what ends up happening is your, your arms are not like trying to get in front of you to protect something. You're actually like, I just made this save and my hands are still out here. That's cool. Right. That's cool. Um, since you're talking about books, what's the winning book I see behind you? Sherry. So glad <laughs> what this one. I'm so glad you asked. This is mine. I wrote this. So this is called An Athlete's Guide to Winning in Sports and Life. It's on Amazon. It hit number two in sports psychology when we launched. It's all my... Um, uh, I wrote this kind of as an Olympian with my work at athletespecific.com. And I'm rebranding a program that I do over there called the Athlete OS, so the Athlete Operating System. But um, yeah, this is, this is my book. And... Um, and this is something that you can read with your kids. And, and I wrote it in such a way that it has like this obscenely long like table of contents. So you can pick a category, a topic and, and read it. Um, um, yeah, so um, I'm a little biased, but you should read this one too. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, thanks for asking. So it's on it's on Amazon. It's also on Kindle, and I think I think it's actually it might be on special on Kindle now too. I don't have an audio book of it though yet. Um, audio books are a ton of work. So, but yeah, uh, check it out. <laughs> get one for your get one for your kids. All right. So yeah. So listen, guys. Great. I uh, hope that helps. Great talk tonight. <laughs> we talked about a lot. Uh, I went way longer than I was planning to, but that's okay. I think next week I'm going to start, I'm going to start back up my, the Facebook live that I do for my, um, raising high performing athletes group, which I have, I shut down last year, just kind of COVID and everything. But, um, I hope that, uh, we'll hopefully get that back on board. So, um, no problem guys. Really appreciate that. Um, no problem, Sherry. Good luck to your goalie. Um, Mike Parash, I do it now. It just hurts a lot. I guess I like punishment. Yeah, there's a point where lacrosse goalies, like I remember I got to this point in high school where I was like, I couldn't get hit hard enough with the ball. Like, I, like that was a legitimate thought going through my head was you couldn't hurt me. And, but that is not something in my opinion that is coachable and is not something in my opinion that should be taught. Right. Cause I don't believe, um, I don't believe that I don't believe you can coach crazy. I don't believe you can coach like suck it up. I don't believe you can coach um, whatever. You just can't. Um, and so when people say that, like, you know, there was a comment in the group last week, like someone said uh, um, there was a goalie who was having trouble getting in front of the ball. Um, and, and somebody said, just tell the goalie that, get making a save and getting bruised and saving a ball for the team or saving a ball for the team is more important than getting bruised or more, or more valuable. Well, like that's your value, dude. You can't teach that to an 11 year old kid, a 14 year old kid, even an 18 year old kid. Um, so, uh, yeah, as Ma as Mike just wrote, you know, dude, you know, dude bruises at, yeah, at 47 years old bruises last two and a half weeks. Well, I don't, that's one of the reasons why I don't allow bruise photos in our group. Because I think there's nothing cool about celebrating bruising. That's not cool at all. Because if you think about it, like if your goalie walks off the field and comes home and has a massive bruise on the inside of her leg, what's the difference between that bruise that she got with a lacrosse ball and the coach going up to her with like a with a like a, a rubber mallet and going whack? Right? It's unnecessary. We don't need it. It's not helping the goalie, you know, and that's not, it's not reminding the goalie of good things. It's just a, it's, it's just, you know, and so, yeah, I get it. You know, we, you know, we talk about our goalies and we think how tough they are and how, how but it's not toughness, it's courageousness. Right. And, and courage only lasts so long. Right. So that's why I don't, I don't really talk about that stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I agree. My son doesn't buy it now. It doesn't happen to him, but the pain is real. 
hey, if your goalie can get to that point and they're like, yeah, I love it, that's cool. But it, that's only as long as they are, uh, um, uh, you, you know, I always say it's short lived. I had this discussion last year. I totally offended some dad who said his daughter didn't want to wear shin guards. And I was like, well, then she doesn't want to be world class. And he's like, what the hell is that supposed to mean? I'm like, well, like you give me 30 minutes with your daughter uh, with a bucket of lacrosse balls. And uh, we're going to work on off stick low shots that she has to save with her left shin and, and her left knee. I'm like, we're going to get like two of those shots done. And then she's going to limp out of the cage. Right. So that's, that's really, so the question is like, does your goalie want to be world-class? Does your coaches want to create a world-class goalie? Well, being world-class is thousands of repetitions. And that's where I see, even at the division one level, I see goalies who are not making saves because they haven't spent thousands of repetitions making that save. So the UVM goalie misses save to their off stick low that he needed to save with his left foot and he couldn't do it. And I'm like, you know what? A soccer player in a world cup with, money on the line uh would be able to if that was a soccer ball he would have made that stop okay. all right guys thanks for watching and thanks for listening wherever you are do me a favor hit the like button if you like this and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already when you're ready head on over to lacrossegoalieuniversity.com forward slash coaching so i can work with you and your goalie and while you're at it check out athletespecific.com to learn more about mental performance and high performance. You may not know this, but I work with athletes in a variety of sports. Lacrosse is my love, but man, I love athletes and the families who support them. So head on over to athletespecific.com, check it out. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.